The U.S. Supreme Court hearing arguments from Coinbase today over whether or not the crypto exchange can force customers into arbitration. Alexis Keenan is here with a special guest for the latest on that, Alexis. Thanks, Shauna. Joining us now is Hassan Zavari, who argued today against Coinbase before the Supreme Court. Hassan is representing Abraham Bielski, who had more than $30,000 stolen from his Coinbase account. Welcome, Hassan. Hi, nice to be here. So uh, your client, Mr. Bielski, uh, he's among a class of plaintiffs who went after Coinbase, sued Coinbase for very different reasons. But what those plaintiffs, what they have in common is that their cases got into court despite the user agreement from Coinbase that says very specifically that all disputes between its customers and the platform have to go to arbitration and specifically not into U.S. court. So Coinbase, of course, disagrees with this and is asking for its cases uh, to be stayed while uh, that determination is made by an appellate court. So explain why your clients, uh, your client and others like him need these cases to go forward without delay? Yeah, thank you. And it's good to be here. Uh, listen, the, the thing about arbitration is, is that it is being used by corporations, banks, and other large institutions to keep people out of court and to prevent them from teaming up together to try and help one another when there are smaller cases like this. Mr. Bielski lost $30,000, but there are hundreds, if not thousands, of other people who lost money also because of Coinbase's deficient security practices. And so what Coinbase is trying to do is to use the arbitration clause to delay things. They already The judge already found that the arbitration clause is not enforceable. But while that's up on appeal, what they're saying is, is that we shouldn't be able to go forward with the lawsuit. They want delay on top of delay. And what we are arguing about today is, is whether or not the case should go forward and whether we should be able to proceed now that the judge has found that the arbitration agreement is not enforceable. Now, Coinbase and other tech companies, they have been targeted by class actions, by individual plaintiffs, uh, saying that they uh, want to uh, avoid this type of litigation. But um, what are the risks, though, to Coinbase and other companies trying to use these arbitration agreements if you win your case, what kind of risks are they facing? Well, I, I think the biggest risk is actually a benefit. And, and the risk is, is that they're held accountable and that they ultimately have to follow the law and they have to increase their security and they have to take care of customers when their money is stolen by scammers. And ultimately, that's what all financial institutions are meant to do. It's what they're supposed to do. And so they're playing games and they're trying to hide from this class action. But ultimately, um, if they are forced to follow the rules, if they are forced to uh, comply with the same laws and regulations that apply to other financial institutions, it's going to be good for business. It's going to be good for them because people will have trust in Coinbase and other institutions like them that their money, their, their crypto is safe. But right now, there just is absolutely zero confidence in that. Now, one of the things that Coinbase's lawyer talked to uh, during the arguments uh, with the justices is that uh, th it would be possible that during discovery, if these cases went forward in the trial courts, that there could actually be some embarrassing information that could come out. So is that too a risk, uh, given that arbitration is often limited discovery and a lot of these things uh, happen behind closed doors in terms of getting to if there is even a settlement in these cases? Yeah, uh, Mr. Kotchell raised that argument today, but I think it's a bit of a red herring because actually there, most arbitrations are not confidential. Um, they, the rules of the AAA and JAMS, which are the two biggest arbitral organizations, do not require confidentiality. And any information that comes out that's confidential can be protected by a protective order. It's really just an excuse for um, trying to come up with a, a reason for delay. It, it really um, is something that if there really was something that was like competitively sensitive, there are protective orders that can be put into place. So frankly, I, I, I don't see much in that argument. and it, it didn't seem to impress the justices either. Now, more broadly, when we look at whether it's Coinbase or other crypto platforms, other tech companies uh, that hold these types of digital assets, if you do end up winning your case, do you see that then as uh, 
being kind of a power shift for the users who use these uh, platforms to exchange financial assets? Does that change the, the playing field between the platforms and the customers? Well, I, I certainly hope so, and that is our aim. Our aim is to, to bring some fairness to the process. So let me just give you a little bit of an example in this case. Mr. Bielski, after he lost $30,000, could not even get in touch with anybody from Coinbase. He tried emails, he tried calls, he, clocked, he tried uh, chatbots, and couldn't reach a live person. That's just not tenable in a financial institution that has uh, hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars of people's assets under control. So yeah, we hope to make a, ma a major change in the way that, that Coinbase uh, operates its business and to make it accountable to its customers, which ultimately uh, it could not exist without those customers. Well, I know that a lot of companies that use these type of mandatory arbitration agreements will be watching your case very closely. Thank you, Hassan. Uh, thanks for being with us today. Hassan Zavari, Shauna, back to you.